What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today I'm going to be tackling a topic that a lot of you have requested throughout the years actually. I've never, I don't think I've ever really uh, give it, given it much thought and that is how to design sub pages um, that work well and kind of just work well and seamlessly in, in relation to the like homepage for instance. So we're gonna take a look at the designcourse.com homepage design here and I'm going to show you how I would tackle designing a kind of like a blog post slash article sub page based on this design that you see here. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe, go to designcourse.com, enter your email to be notified when it officially re releases here coming up in January 4th, and let's get started. Now wait one moment, if you're interested in UI design, you might also be interested in having the ability to take your designs and make them a reality in the browser. Now if that's the case, you should definitely check out the front end developer career path at scrimba.com. They've recently launched their front end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content. There are hundreds of interactive coding challenges and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get access to the front-end developer career path at scrimba.com. All right, so here we go. Uh, here is the, um, the mock-up for the landing page for the most part. I don't know what this big gap is, but you guys get the point. Especially if you just go to designcourse.com, you can see it as is. Um, so this is basically it. And what we'll wanna do is replicate it. So Alt and Shift and just drag that sucker right over there. And then I'll, what I wanna do is take everything and just gut it pretty much. Uh, wait, with exception to the footer, we'll keep that around. Now, of course, you wanna make sure things are set up properly in terms of uh, components so you're not unnecessarily um, you know, you, you obviously want to make good practice so you don't have to change things in a million places um, naturally. So we're just going to stick to probably around this height just for this example right here. So, all right, the first thing that I'll talk about here, um, the most obvious, like the starting point is going to be the navigation. What do you do with your nav bar in terms of how it's structured with your home page versus your sub page? Well, keep it exactly the same. I, mo in most cases, your, your navigation, the way it's structured on the homepage will be structured exactly the same way on the sub pages. Why? Well, it, it's, I, it, it's that way ideally because it's familiar, familiarity. Oh, that's terrible. I can't even talk. COVID's got me all jacked up. Familiar, familiarity. Okay. Basically people, the first time they're going to uh, see your site, usually uh, it's not always the case, but sometimes uh, is on the homepage. And that's the first time you know they see the branding, the logo, which usually is left aligned right here. And then also your navigation, which may or may not look like this. Um, if you start changing things up unnecessarily, it's just a bad, it's a bad thing, especially for the navigation. That's where they're used to seeing things. All right, so leave it exactly the same nine times out of 10 uh, when it comes to your, your landing page. Now, sometimes on some landing pages, they're heavily sales oriented. Maybe they won't have as many links or whatever at the top, um, but barring that, keep it exactly the same. You want a good amount of white space around it and centered up typically and yeah, easy to use. So next up, for this particular page that we're designing, it's gonna be an article or like a blog post page, all right? So the very first thing I, I, I really worry or concern myself about is the, the headline, all right? So in this case, a, a, an article, there's gonna be a strong headline for the topic of every uh, single page or blog post. So do we want it to make it as big as this one over here? I, yeah, well, we have to ask ourselves how much, how many characters are, are there going to be, like maximum in terms of what's allowed in terms of uh, like a, a blog post title or something like that. So I probably wouldn't go quite this large. Generally speaking, also because this is gonna be a typographic heavy sort of page because it's an article blog post page, I, we have to also define you know, what the actual body type is going to be in terms of uh, font size. Typically speaking, 16 pixels, you can't go wrong there. Um, and so that's what we'll start off with. And then I, a lot of people say two and a half times of that, 2.5 times that amount, like based on whatever your, your body paragraph copy is or the size is. 
that'll be your headline size right there. So if it's 16 pixels for the body uh, paragraph size, then it'll be around 40 pixels or so um, you know, for the title. And of course, when we're dealing with the front-end development portion like CSS, we're not dealing in pixel units. Uh, if, if, the, the, if you wanna stick around 16, then you're gonna make it at one M or rem unit uh, for your body paragraph size. And then for your headline, it'd be 2.5 rem or M units. Uh, for the headline. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to get uh, a, some type here and I'm going to type in um, how to effectively utilize, um, let's see, drop shadows in UI design. Okay, so it, it's a de decently lengthy title for us to get uh, working off here. So the first thing, position, where should it go? Well, first of all, Right here to the left uh, of where the branding is, is where I want this to go as well. Um, so also 40 pixels, let's do that. And let's also change it to whatever type this is, which happens to be, uh, actually it happens to, to be Unido, uh, Nunito here. So we'll, we'll, we'll stick with that then. Um, but although we're actually gonna change it because in, I, I am gonna change everything over to Poppins. <laughs> so sorry, I'm kind of working off the cuff here. Uh, let's see here, we're gonna change this to Poppins. And we want it bold, all right? The reason I want it bold is so that we can really create that typographic visual hierarchy. You'll see what I mean in a minute. All right, so what we wanna do is, uh, let's say we want it to be like right around here. We have, if I hit Shift R to get our rulers up, we have a ruler here, and we got a ruler right here. So on the very right, very edge of the last link of the navigation and the very edge of uh, where the logo begins. We have this set up perfectly right here in line. So that's pretty good. Um, again, it doesn't have to be 40 pixels. I mean, you, you have leeway. There's no reason, you know, you can't go up to 45 or even 50. Um, but I wanna go too much more than like 10 pixels, give or take. So like 30 would be down here. I wouldn't wanna go much smaller than that either. So it's gonna be somewhere around there uh, for that. Now, another thing you have to worry about is uh, your letting, which is the line height. Um, now, th usually you can get away with it being auto. Usually I like to, to be a little bit condensed, a little bit more condensed than auto, or in other words, more like less white space between the lines of type. And if you really want to see what it looks like, you know, you can you can drag that in there and see what it looks like multiple lines of type. So this right here is perfectly fine. Now, also, we want a way for people to get back to like the blog post main page or wherever that's at. So what I'll do is like a little uh, breadcrumb navigation up here. And so again, we want to mind these uh, these vertical ruler as guidelines. So. We're gonna go ahead and type in, um, we'll just say home, I guess. All right, so here's where good visual hierarchy comes into place. We don't want it this big, why? Because it looks exactly the same as the title. So of course we're gonna make it a lot smaller. Let's go down to something like, uh, we can go down maybe to, yeah, let's just do 16 here. We could further reinforce that visual hierarchy if uh, we want to maybe make that um, not bold, but maybe we'll make that bold and just leave it there. Um, and then maybe we'll put right here, uh, maybe there'll be a, a, a category called design. All right, and then we're going to, don't worry, I'm gonna change this up in a bit. We're gonna get out Iconify, which is a free plugin for Figma. And I'm gonna uh, put in right, like a right arrow. And I think we'll just grab this one here. Oh my God, it's huge. So some of these uh, assets are really large for some reason, but I'm just gonna scale that down quite a bit. We'll get it moved up here to the center. Let's close that out. I want it smaller than what it is. All right, and then we'll go ahead and make that, oops, we don't want that. We'll double click into here, there we go. We'll make this white. All right, so let's see what this looks like right here. All right, so you know, I might actually wanna go smaller than this. So let's take this down to like 14. And let's change this to 
our primary uh, color, which happens to be like this green tealish color. So if I change this here and we grab that, there we go. And then this, we can also make uh, not bold. So we'll just make that regular. And hit get Shift R, because sometimes I like, I like to see the design as is without any of that going on. So a good amount of white space between your nav bar, you, want, you don't want it too close because then it becomes ugh, it's just like a mess, but you don't want it too far either. I, down here would be way too far, it would just look way too empty. So there's a nice middle ground, um, probably right around here is what I like. And then of course, you wanna make sure things are evened up and equal as they should be. And that looks pretty good. Now, what else do I, I prefer to see? Now, I personally hate blogs that don't have dates. Like, it's like they're trying to trick people into thinking like, well, we don't want them to know that this is an old blog post. Well, the more information for the user, the better. So we're gonna design for that. So I'm gonna take this over here. We're working at 14. Let's try 16 here, and then let's put in just some basic date information and like metadata. So we'll just say, um, let's not do it September. Let's do October 12th, 2021 by Gary Simon. All right. So. If we get this in the line, of course, I, can, I know for sure it's already correctly here. Um, we have to ask yourself, what you know, how much white space do we want it to it to be an equal amount of white space based on the white space between this element and this element versus here and here? And you know, that's you could do that. That's perfectly fine. Um, I think what I want to do is make this bold. So we'll come over here. So October twenty twenty one. And then maybe we'll make this stuff regular. And then we could also perhaps underline this as a way to signify that it's a link. We could also possibly consider making this uh, our primary color. So you have options. I'm gonna leave it like this just for now. And you, we could also stand to take this color and maybe not make it completely white. We can come down here. You don't wanna to go too far because then you'd run into contrast uh, issues. But right there seems to be pretty decent. I think that's fine. We can always come back to it. All right, so then next up is our body type. So let's go ahead and left click and drag out. We get control R by the way. And just drag out a nice big size, roughly right around there. All right, so we're working at 16 pixels here at Poppins regular, that looks fine. Um, I'm gonna change this to auto just to see what it looks like at auto by default. And then with it selected, we're gonna go to plugins and we're gonna to to select our Lorem Ipsum. All right, so with that said, <clears throat> let's choose auto generate at the bottom. All right, so now we have this massive wall of text. So let's, let's uh, create some spaces here. And I think that'll be good. Let's go ahead and delete the rest. All right, Shift R. All right, so for me personally, I would like to increase the letting a little bit by based on the default. Like right here seems to be real nice, a 31 based on a 16 by pixel font size. So that's pretty solid to me. Um, Having absolute maximum contrast, this background, by the way, isn't completely black. Um, it's offset a little bit. And then we could also do the same just a slightly with this as well. I, so maybe not quite 100% brightness, but maybe we'll come down just a little bit like right around here. That also helps bring a lot of attention up here to the completely 100% white and very large and you know thick font weight title up there. So. This right here is fine in and of itself. Uh, you might wanna also add in a design for um, social media sharing icons. Maybe you could write it, line it over here. Um, you could, some people even add like a little bar right here. You could do that as well. Um, also uh, for the actual layouts, you might wanna have sub headlines like you know for like the H2, H3, H4. You could do that as well. I would probably take an H2 and make it instead of 40 pixels, if this is 40 pixels, make that maybe like around 30 or 32. 
Um, I think we'll design for that real quick, but I also wanted to show that you could also change up uh, the design of this area here too. So for instance, if I replicate this, just so we have a couple here, um, we can take a rectangle and we could do several different things with this. So watch what I mean. So we're basically here centered. We're gonna right click and we're gonna send that to the back. All right, and then we're gonna make it same color as the background, except just give it a little bit of tint, which is lightness. Very minimally, there we go. Now we're gonna take the type inside of it and we're going to ensure that it has equal white space all around it. Then what we could do is we could duplicate that and then drag this up and then right click plugins and go to, somebody's messaging me on Discord, we'll go to Unsplash and we'll just type in, um, you know, web design, whatever. And here, I like that picture. And look at that. So now we've effectively designed for uh, a nice kind of like a featured image right here. All right, everybody, hopefully you found that interesting and you gained a little bit of insight into my thought process behind designing subpages. Really, it's not rocket science. You just wanna keep consistent. Use the brand colors consistently. Also, same topography as well, and just try to keep the overall feel that's been established on the homepage. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you real soon. Goodbye. <laughs>